Guys, if you haven't heard of the Burnt Basque Cheesecake, you're about to discover the most delicious cheesecake in the world and the easiest to make. It's so easy, even I can make it. And I'm gonna show you how. Should we hit the kitchen? Venga, let's go. So there is a bar in San Sebastian called La Viña, and these guys invented this burnt Basque cheesecake, and my god, it is amazing. They make so many every day, they literally stack them up on the bar, and people spill out into the streets to eat it. Now guys, I don't bake. I don't know if you bake, I don't bake. I am not a baker, but this I can bake. I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's super easy, but huddle up, Yoli. Look, if I look terrible, it's not because I'm a nervous, crazy wreck in lockdown. I have horrendous allergies. This whole lockdown thing, less pollution, more nature, I don't know, but I am like so that's why I look terrible, just warning. Okay, let's get on with the cheesecake. Now there are a few tricks to this cheesecake. I've made it a couple times over the last few weeks to test it out and I've learned a few things. I'm gonna share those with you, but broadly speaking, it's super easy. And the first thing you're actually gonna do is turn on the oven and get it preheating. And you're gonna put it up to 220. Okay, first you're gonna grab a massive bowl. Massive bowl. <laughs> this is the most massive bowl that I have. And then you're gonna start dumping your ingredients in. The first ingredient, and this might blow your mind a little bit, is a kilo kg. a kg of cream cheese. Now you might have some fancy farmer's market cream cheese. We're using Philadelphia here, perfectly fine. I don't need to measure this because these are all 250 gram packs and I have measured it and man, they nail it. They have machines that get it like literally 250 grams, sometimes 249. Mm, so artisanal. Yeah. Just like mother's baking. <laughs> Step one, peel back the foil wrapper. <laughs> Just like mama used to make. <laughs> Literally get it all because one thing I have learned with baking, or I've read at least, is that precision is key. Baking is a science. Look at me, I'm like a like a magician here, a wizard. Yeah, craft, craft I can man. I can open a pack of Philadelphia faster than anyone in Madrid. <laughs> Alright. Alright, I've noticed Yoli filming my uh, my messiness over here, just dumping because I'm gonna clean these up. I love this. I love the sound of the foil <laughs> peeling back. You know, it reminds me of my youth growing up. All right, get that in there. This is where you need your little spoon. Mm -hmm. Ultimate kitchen hacks. Okay, oven's warming up, clock is ticking. Next, you're gonna crack seven eggs and you're gonna put them in the bowl, just in case that wasn't clear. Okay, so I've got these eggs here. Egg number one. So I have a theory that cracking eggs is all about confidence. Sometimes I undercrack and sometimes I overcrack. And I go through phases. Sometimes I have a week where I'm, I just can't crack the egg. Like I, I'm like, eh, you know, and it's not cracking properly. And then I'm like, Wah! and it's like coming at me. And then usually I'm getting like shell in there. So cracking eggs is like parallel parking. It's all about confidence. Once you've got it, you're out. Ugh, I forgot the apron. Uh, oh no. Anyway, this is not an apron job. Nah. So the eggs are in. I should also add, all ingredients should be at room temperature. Don't know why, but that's what I read. And as I say, when you're baking, don't mess around, guys. Don't get creative. Just, just, follow, do, the just rules. follow the rules. <laughs> get in line. Okay, now sugar. And it's pretty much a shitload. All right. <laughs> okay, so this is where I get my scales out. You're gonna do that. So that's why it's the T-A-R-E thing. I don't know how to say that. Tear, tar, you know, where it like, it's including the weight of the bowl and you're gonna pour your sugar in. How much sugar? 400 grams, boom, that's a lot. All right. Ole. Jackpot, bells are ringing in Vegas. Okay, then you're gonna dollop in 200 mils of cream. There it is, 200 mils. Okay, next, the last ingredient is one tablespoon, just one tablespoon of flour to help it kind of bind together. Now, because I'm learning how to cook and I'm kind of excited by all the geekiness. I'm actually going to measure that one tablespoon. One tablespoon is 15 grams. There it Money. is. 15. Boom. <laughs> okay. I wonder if they have like a baking show. You know there's shows like massive trucks and they're like massive trucks driving over ice. That's a thing. Is there a baking equivalent of that? I'm sure. Like baking huge things too? On ice. On ice? That would be cool. So you've got all your ingredients in there. I get a bit nervous when I'm making this thing because the whole baking thing, the whole chemistry, the whole precision. It's not like throwing some gumbas in a pan where it's mm -hmm. like aojo, but mm. I, I feel confident. I've done it twice at work. So you've got everything in there. Okay, get your stick mixer, your kitchen aid. I mean, you could even do this by hand. <sighs> so really you're just gonna whiz it until it's super creamy. So anyway. <laughs> So 
So you come here often? <laughs> All right, I think that's enough. You want it creamy, I'm gonna taste it. Not for any reason apart from the fact that it's really delicious and sugary <laughs> and out of control. <coughs> ah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Woo! Is it good? Yeah. The sugar rush just hit me. I just had the sugar rush and the sugar crash within about three seconds. That's mm -hmm. how intense it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so delicious. It's just like the cake, but in a different texture. Should we just stop here? We're done. Just drink it. You drink it? I would drink yeah. it. I would drink yeah. it for breakfast every morning mm, for a week. Yum. So now you're going to get a, a cake mold, whatever it's called, a molde in Spanish, but like a, you can get a spring form. That's what I recommend. This is the one I bought. It's really, really good. It's 24 centimeters across, which I think is the ideal width. That's 10 inches. If you want to know what this one is, I've linked to it below. So you pop it there, and what you're going to do is you're going to grab some uh, kitchen paper or baking paper, whatever you call it, and you're going to measure out two lengths of it that effectively are, if you get in here, Yoli, that are the width of your cooking, whatever this thing is called. What's it called? Like cake bowl? <laughs> mole. You spray mole. form cake bowl, mole. <laughs> I'm looking for the English term and it's the allergies guys. I'm not an idiot mm -hmm. And so you want to measure it out there just a little bit longer because you're gonna want it to come up on either side And you get two because you're actually gonna lay down in crosshatch the thing. I never said the word crosshatch before so I'm excited about that Really? Boom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Now one thing I recommend you doing not compulsory, but I highly recommend it is that you dampen you moisten that you wetten Sorry, a lot of words there for the same thing. You're your, like a thesaurus. I know, thesaurus. You want to wet, wet it because it's going to get hot in there and this is going to get really charred and the paper is going to become really brittle. So if you dampen it, then you're going to lay it out in here. So why do you layer it? Because effectively this is like this molten kind of cheesecake and you need that to kind of keep it from sticking, but also to, to keep the whole thing together. So you've got to cross it over like that and just make sure it comes up on both sides. Then what you're going to do, and I always get a bit nervous about this part, I don't know why extra nervous, is you're going to pour in your cake mix into the mold. Who would have thought? It's crazy, right? I know, it's crazy. Do not just put this bowl in the oven. <laughs> Pour it into that thing that you did there. All right, Yoli. Incredible. You know the one sad thing about this recipe, Yoli? What? This recipe has no use for Pablo's knife. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then into your oven. Open the oven first. Yeah. Hey. Kitchen hacks by Yoli. Yeah. <laughs> Open the oven before you put before the cake in. Before you drop the cake on the floor. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> 220 degrees Celsius. It's and going. medium height or what? Yeah, in the middle, in uh -huh. the middle. Guys, 40 minutes and we'll be back. Okay, 40 minutes up, moment of truth. I can smell it, taking it out. Wow, look at that. You're gonna probably be thinking, James, you burnt the cake. James did not burn the cake. Remember, it's the burnt butt cheesecake. All right, <laughs> so look at this. Look at that jiggle. Mm. That's good. But here's the key, it's not ready to eat yet. That jiggliness means that it's creamy and liquidy and molten inside. And as great as that would taste, you're just not there yet. You need to leave it now for a couple of hours, even longer, to cool down to room temperature. So everything, I feel a bit silly with these. So everything <laughs> compacts down. We have to go to lunch, well, have to. We're going to lunch to Yoli's parents in Alicorcon. First time Yoli's seeing her parents in like two months. Yay! We'll be back in about four hours, which will be like three seconds for you guys. Uh -huh. And then we'll get into the cake. All right, see you in a moment. Okay. Uh -huh. uh -huh. <laughs> Boom, we're back from Yoli's parents' house. Take a look down here, Yoli. It is jiggle free. The choice for me, it is set. We've left it. We left here about five hours room temperature. We're going to take it outside and eat this mm. thing. We're going to taste it. All right, so. Okay, I'm going to unlatch it. Woo! Woo! You can tell it's firm on top. Look at that. Wow, but it's it's moist. I never want to touch it when it gets like this because it's just so perfect and beautiful. So peel back the parchment just so you can properly cut it like that. And you know what I love, Yoli? I love these parts around here. Like, oh, that golden kind of creamy, mm -hmm. cheesy bit wow. and then the burnt top. All right. Very naughty. Unsheath your knife. <laughs> I'm going in. That. Perfect. Okay, Yoli, it's time to try it. The Basque cheesecake, the burnt Basque cheesecake. Your breakfast. <laughs> and here's the thing, guys, there's a lot of recipes I find where they leave it really kind of liquidy in the middle. I don't like that. This is how I like it. And it's just gonna get better as the days go by. 
All right. Oh my god. Yeah. Speechless. <laughs> oh my god. It's cakey. It's creamy. It's a little. It's that burnt. You don't taste burnt. It's just like it's just this little golden thing on top, and then just a creaminess inside. Mm. Melting. Mm -hmm. And watch out, guys. One slice of this, and that's enough. Two, and you'll feel sick. Trust me. It's a bomb of sugar. It's a bomb of cream cheese. Mmm. All right. <laughs> Recipe below. Check it out. Get there. Make it. Send me pictures. James Blick Spain on Instagram. Tag me. I love you guys. We'll see you in the next video. Ciao. Oh, and if you want to cook more Spanish food, click the playlist. It's appearing over here. We've got a lot of tapas recipes on there. Happy cooking. Enjoy. See you soon.